That God does things with us most powerfully in ways that we are unexpected. Uh, but I think that those ways come from the way that we communicate with him. Mm -hmm. So I want to start out uh, this morning actually talking about prayer. But more so, the, the, the topic that I have this morning is called restored. Restored. A lot of things that are broken in our lives are broken in our relationships, and we wonder how is it that we can make it come back together? How can we reform it, remake it so that it is anew? How can we get back to the place where we as a broken people in broken lives can be restored? Yeah. I was reading the other day uh, a, a, a story about a man who who was infinitely wanting to understand more about prayer. And as he began to pray, he said, God, uh, make it an opportunity for me to be able to pray for someone. Give me the opportunity to pray for someone that I haven't prayed for. Give me the opportunity to know when to pray and who to pray for. Oh, yeah. And he was diligent in this prayer. And so early the next morning, he got up and he prayed the same thing. And as he went to work and he got on the bus, he was a little reluctant, a little hesitant, a little shy, sitting down on the bus and seeing the overwhelming number of people on the bus hmm. and still recalling in his mind, God, how do I pray for somebody in the midst of this situation? And as you're getting closer to work, like many of us, we're hesitant because we're thinking about what we just asked God for. What do we put ourselves into? And as he was getting closer to work, and he thought he had just missed his deadline by almost reaching the, the, the doors opening to the bus. A burly man got down on the bus and sat right next to him, huge. And, and, and he could see the doors. And, and as he got down, the man put his hands in his, in, 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 upon his face and he began to weep. And he said, God, I need you. I don't know what else to do or who else to turn to. It's hard when you find yourself in the midst of asking God something and he gives it to you. But when he begins to give it to you, what do you do with it? <laughs> so there needs to be a plant when, when you ask God for something that you receive it, but that you also work it out. Yeah. We don't know what that man had done, but I imagine many of you, if you look to the person right next to you, and you know that God has been asking us to pray for those who are near us, who are close to us, or even for our neighbors or for those that are around us. What do we do in the midst of an untimely season of difficulty and we know in our hearts that we should pray for them? Do you pray for them? Weird. Do you do you really think about those people that are around you? Now, most of us will say, yes, we do. But I'm going to get into that for just a moment here as we begin. Let me open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you right now for exposing some things about prayer, Lord God, for helping us to see you, God, just as you are. For Father, we know that we are a lost and broken generation, God, that there is none, God, who do not need you. For Father, you said you did not come for the well, but you came for the sick. You came for the lost. You came for the hungry. You came for those that were destitute. Uh -huh. So I admit this morning, God, that I am lost. I'm destitute, God. I'm in need of you. And Father, I ask, Lord God, that as, Father God, that I pray, God, that you would begin not only to restore me, but to restore your people. Yeah. I hear all the time those who cry out to you, God, in their season of desperation, God, to hear your voice. And this morning, God, you desire to speak to us. And so, Father, I pray that you would open up our hearts, open up our minds to receive from you mightily. That, Father, that we not only be hearers of your word this morning, but doers. And it's in Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. There is something found in James chapter 5, verse 13, that is 
uh, often inquisitive uh, as we read through it. Some of us may struggle through it. Some of us may identify some things in it. Some of us may see the need for it. Hmm. But we have to place ourselves, amen, at the master's feet and begin to understand what does it mean, amen, to pray. What does it mean, amen, to be restored? So verse 13 follows in the book of James. Are any, of, are any among you suffering? They should pray. Mm. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. My God. Sometimes when I look at this, amen, and I'm really honing in on it, I see, amen, the need for prayer, the desperation sometimes that cries out in the middle of our prayers. But I often wonder, amen, that as we are praying, are we praying with sincerity? Are we praying fervently? Are we praying with anticipation, with hope? Are we praying in the restored life? Sometimes I don't understand that when God asks us to pray, why doesn't God just heal us? Why doesn't God make things expedited? Why doesn't God do things now? Why can't he see that we already are in need of prayer? Why do we have to express it? As many of us may have looked at that and said, you know, well, many of us, amen, even be questioning, is there a God? Or, or wonder, how can I reach some, some higher being that will be able to minister to me and minister to my need? And it's hard. Because when I read that first verse in verse 13, it says, are any among you suffering? And it's hard to say that when I look around, there is a lot of suffering. There are people everywhere that are dying or in need or in the hospital or loved ones or even people in our own family who are suffering and are in need of prayer. And it says if they are suffering, then they should pray. And often I wonder, does that mean that you're talking to me? Am I supposed to pray for them or are they supposed to pray for themselves? That's a question when we begin to pray. Are we really praying for their needs or are we praying for our own? There are a lot of things that come up that when I read this, I wonder, God, are you, are, you, are, are you inviting me in to what you are doing here on planet Earth? Are you inviting me in to, to the process of what you're doing with my fellow brother or sister? Are you inviting me in to do the things that I'm doing with my family? Or are you asking me just to do this? See, there, there, there is something to be said about people who are suffering because anybody who knows anything about suffering, that when you are going through, you don't know how to pray for yourself or others. Yeah. So when he says, are any among you suffering, if I'm suffering, I have a hard time being able to meet my own need. So when I look at James, if you go through the book of James, he deals over and over with crying out to the Lord for specific needs and how to do it. And I love the book of James because the book of James is so practical. I don't like the fact that sometimes when I'm going through that I need a whole history lesson to be able to tell me what I'm supposed to do, where I'm supposed to go, or how to be. James gets right to the point. If you're suffering, then pray. If you have a need, pray. Seek my face. And the one identical to that is that if good things are happening to you, if God is blessing you, then praise him. Automatic, there is no in-between. There is no, 
Wait, what do I got to go through to do? No, he tells you exactly what to do. Pray. You know, when I looked at this too, I often thought about the fact that sometimes we go through life mimicking all the other things that are going on around us. But do we know the necessity of prayer? Do we understand what prayer really is? When I pray, what is it? See, most people do have that response that we are to talk to God. Because I was listening to John Piper the other day. He said, you know, it's really more than that. It's more than talking to God. It's more than speaking to God. Because as I was coming here uh, this morning, God was dealing with me on some issues and, and, and really speaking to me. I just felt so overwhelmed with him and his presence. Because as I read this again, if you are suffering, you don't know how to say or speak or do something. Amen. You're in the midst of your pain. You're in the midst of all those things and you have to cry out to God. It is difficult in that. It's difficult sometimes when you're overwhelmed with joy to be able to express that joy. So I'm in the midst and I don't know how to pray for myself. And I begin to look at what prayer is. Amen. Merely is it just speaking as I'm speaking to you and you are speaking to me? Because when I go through the word of God and I find those people in the condition, amen, that they're in for prayer, they're in need and some of them don't even know what to say. As a matter of fact, when you look at Hannah, she begged God for a little boy, somebody, a child to love. And in the midst of that, the priest comes in and he said, are you drunk? You're battling. You, you don't even understand what you're saying. But she knew in her heart what she wanted to say. What she was trying to get across to God. Amen. And we look at that. It's not just talking to God. God is in the midst of seeing your condition. And you're seeing him as, his, as your hope. You're seeing him as somebody who can address your need. So when he says to him, you among you who are suffering, let them pray. Let them cry out to God. But the thing is, is that when I also look at the other scriptures and I go through, I see more than prayers. I see, amen, that there is a condition from the Old Testament, amen, to the New Testament concept of prayer. Many of us look at prayer, again, as being able just to talk to God. But when I look at the history, amen, of the Jews, did you realize that many of them could not speak his name? They reverenced the idea of prayer with such reverence that they could not speak the name of God. It says that, that they, 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 they came to him. And if you look at Exodus chapter 3, when Moses, amen, is before the Lord. And he said, what shall we call you? Uh -huh. And God says, I am. <laughs> I am. And so when he begins to say, I am, you know, and you look in, in, into the Hebrew, you, you, you begin to see that it addresses he. He is the one whom I see. Amen. Not the one that talks about him hearing us, but he's the one that I see. So when you look through the Moses and you look, remember the story about him saying, God, if I can just see you face to face, if I can experience I am, that could be considered a prayer. A prayer that I want to be in the presence of God, God Almighty. And we don't understand that when we go into prayer, when we pray to God, when we seek the Lord, there is a certain type of reverence. And he said, I cannot begin to speak the name of God. And so they call him Yahweh. 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 See him. <laughs> And if you think about the word Yahweh, it's almost as if breathing. Yahweh. It's the breath of life. When you breathe in him and breathe out him. You breathe in him and you breathe out him. There is a, a, a certain place in prayer that we're breathing him in and breathing him out. Amen. You begin to understand the necessity of prayer. And so the Jews today, amen, don't refer a lot to Yahweh, but now Adonai, which means that he's so holy, I can't even begin to reference his name. 
But I, when I do speak and I say Adonai, I revere him as the Holy One. Do you realize how many people use the Lord's name in vain? Amen. And so when they had that concept of first ten commandments, because I could not use the Lord's name in vain, I refrained from all of it. I don't even speak his name so that I don't even mess up on the happenstance that I just say his name. I know that when I speak his name, I'm speaking it sincerely, and I know why I'm speaking it. I'm not speaking it out of the side of my mouth. I'm not using his name irreverently, but I reverence what he is and who he is and what he has to say to me and speak to my condition. There is something about that. Are any of you suffering? He says they should pray. Are any of you cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Then he says in James, are any of you among you sick? They should call the elders of the church and have them pray over them. When's the last time that you have seen this happen? Amen. Most times when we have somebody in need, right, we often put it online and we phone call somebody and say, look, there's somebody in need. Let us pray. But there is something about us coming together, amen, and being able to uphold one another, to feel what you feel, to see what you see, to stand in your condition with you, so that when we pray, we're praying together. We are one in the same. And when we look at God's body and he talks about restoring us as a whole, if we are the body of Christ and he's restoring us as a whole body, we need to come together. And it's the elders, amen, the ones, amen, who really truly believe God, the ones who are, 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 are adamant about prayer, that we see these things through and we begin to anoint them. Now, many of people will say, well, you know, I don't know necessarily if I believe that you have to actually anoint somebody in the head or, or on the hand or, or, or wherever they want to anoint them. But they concur that with the Old Testament when it talks about that the elders poured oil over the top of the head so that the whole body was covered. Amen. So we're talking about covering the whole body. And there is something about, amen, this prayer. Amen. Abiding in prayer. If we look at John uh, chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. John chapter 12. Uh, I'm sorry, John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. And I know I'm spending a little time with this because I really want us to sincerely understand what it means, amen, that when we pray, and there is a seriousness to this and there, there is something that we hold so dearly. John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14 says, Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Yeah. And if in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. People get confused about this scripture because oftentimes we go to the scripture and we say, well, he said right here that if I ask him for anything, that he'll deliver it to me. So God, I want a million dollars. God, I want, I want this stuff to be done in my life. But the question is, is that when I pray, am I asking him to align with his will? Amen. Am I asking him because I want him to be the director of my prayer? Am I asking him because in my condition, I want him to see my condition, and I want to see him in fixing my condition so that it lines up with him? Because if I say that I am his body, then he'll restore my body to be healed in line with him. But maybe he's using me for something, amen, that will return for his glory. Yeah. Maybe because, amen, in the midst of my cancer, in the midst of my disability, in the midst of, of my, 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 my mind just being lost, amen, that God is working in the midst of all that because he's trying to use you to get to somebody else. He's trying to use you to minister to somebody else. In your condition, although you are distraught and you're still trusting him, there's somebody who is able-bodied that wants to get to the place where you are, that when they are disabled, when they are in that condition, they can still trust God in the midst. So when we look at prayer, we're looking at prayer in the mindset of being restored. 
restored. Many of us don't understand what it means to be restored. And I'm thinking that the, the scripture that we often say over and over, amen, that, 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 that scripture of, 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 um, of all that we often use over and over to display our concept. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and what forgive their sin and heal their land. In other words, I'm going to restore everything when they seek me. Problem is, is that sometimes I think we go back to the factor that when we're supposed to be looking for God to seek, to answer those prayers, we're not seeking him with our whole heart. And then also he says that some of us, when we ask and we're seeking and we're trying to find that we ask amiss. Yeah. I mean, we don't know how to ask or we don't ask the right thing, yes. which makes and begs the question when we do talk to God, are we asking the right question? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, amen, when we pray, listen to this, when we pray, we often pray seeking that God will answer a question or answer a prayer that we're not even interested in. So when you talk about, amen, when James talked about when we fervently, fervently pray, that means seeking it with your whole heart. You're, you're striving to get that need met, amen, then most of us will pray a prayer that we don't really believe in. He said, pray for me. My, my daughter is in need. Yes, I will pray for you. God, heal them. And then we'll walk off and dismiss it and forget about it. Mm. For me, I cannot do that. Mm. I mean, there's something inside of me that, 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 that will like be a dog on a bone and will not release it until something happens. I am going to be sticking with it until there is an answer to that prayer. And even after there is an answer to that prayer, amen, I may still pray because I want to see more than just what God has done. It's interesting, amen, that when we look at this, amen, we look at the book of James, he also talks about Elijah. And he said, Elijah, being just like you, you know, when I think about this, amen, most of us may look at the Old Testament Elijah and say, how can that be? This man, amen, separated waters just by putting a, a towel down. This man, amen, went and increased this woman's house with all the, the, the water and the necessities and cakes in there that he tripled and quadrupled the amount that she had when she had barely anything. This man who was sent ravens and, and to give him food and drink because he didn't have any. This man who healed a little boy. How is it possible? that I can have the same identical thing as this man Elijah when he's known as so great. And James says that he's just an ordinary man like us. The reason is, is because you have the same ability. Being a man himself, he just trusts God and prayed fervently Amen. that we can have the same thing. And I'm reminded, amen, of a story that really affected me that these young kids went over, uh, um, and I don't remember if it was Africa or Indonesia, but they remember that while they were there and they were ministering amongst the, the crowds, they went into a house and there was a lady who was holding a child, a little, a little child, no more than two, and she was rocking and she was crying. And the, and the kids asked, well, why is, why, is, why is this lady crying? And they spoke to her and they said that they could do no more for her, that she just died. And the kids, believing all that they possibly can, said, you know, we want to see God do something in this. We can't leave this place until God does something. So they began to pray. And they began to put their hands on the little child. And they began to put their hands on mama. And they began to pray. And they prayed and they prayed and they prayed and they wouldn't leave the place. And when they got up, nothing happened. But they prayed some more. And then they thought that they could do no more. But they left it in God's hands. And as they walked out the door and began to look at other people that they could minister to, the woman ran out with excitement. She said, I don't know what happened. But she's opened her eyes and she's breathing now. Whatever you have done, I want the same. Do you realize that you have the same opportunity as Elijah that through your prayers, when you see the condition and you know 
amen, that something is happening. Something can be done through our voice. And James talks about the voice having the ability to bless or cause a foulness. And so I leave you with this. Sometimes we need to act as the salt shaker. You know, I don't know about you, but I can't stand flavorless foods. You know, when you start cooking like eggs or something, there is something about the plain well, taste that doesn't taste right. But when somebody starts adding things to it and starts making it flavorful, it pops. And you remember that popping in your mouth like, oh my, this is too wonderful for words. Amen. Whatever it is that you did to that, do it again because I need more of that. God calls us the salt of the earth. And sometimes through our prayer life and through how we speak and pray for others, we need to be that salt shaker. Amen. That when you go again and go with people and you begin to pray over them, you're sprinkling the salt of life upon those people. And you're causing flavor to come into their life. You're salting and shaking them up from whatever condition that they're in. You are praying and God is releasing things. I leave you with this. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. I know I'm taking time with this today, but this prayer is so important. And I don't want to lose this. Luke 23, verse 34. It says this. When Jesus was on the cross, he prayed this last prayer. Father, Forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. That prayer encapsulates everything that James says about the wanderer. Amen. About those being restored. Because his prayer, his last prayer is, God, don't hold this against them. My words, let them follow through that they will be restored. Because of what I've done and the prayer that I did. Amen. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Oftentimes we jump out at people. We want to be aggressive in what they are doing and saying and being. And we, we, we can get caught up in all society's factors. Amen. And doing all kinds of things. But if you remember Job in the midst of his friends and is telling him, look, you ought to curse God and die. Uh, you ought to just let it go. And, and Job says, I refuse to give up on God. But you know what? Even more so, I refuse to give up on my friends. Because in the end, God told Job. I'm sorry. Yeah, God told Job, you need to pray for your friends. But he told his friends, you better watch out. Because if Job doesn't pray for you, nah. you cannot be spared. Because my anger was against you. Yes. So your prayers will also save those who are around you. And restore those people. So as Christians, we need to reflect on what God is doing because not only did he pray for his friends, but do you know that sometimes in my weakest moments when I'm praying for somebody and I don't feel like praying, that the restoration not only comes for them, but it also comes for me. And God restored Job a hundredfold. We go with that in the presence of the mighty name of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Our response to the message. Uh, 